Hello and welcome to a new video about programming Arduinos. This time we want to control our servo motor. Okay, we want to control the servo motor, uh, but we do not, I do not want to have the servo motor just moving there. I want to control it with our rotary encoder. Okay, so there is a separate video about this rotary encoder and I want to have that if I turn the rotary encoder, then the servo motor should also move. So I'm going to connect the rotary encoder exactly the same way as we had it in the previous video. So we had here plus and minus. This is going to ground and plus 5 volt. All right. Then we have here pin number A. This is gray line. This must go to 2. Then we have, because I want to reuse the program which we done here, pin number B. This was purple. Pin number uh, yeah, and pin number four, this was the switch, and this switch is, is, is brown. Okay, this is working. So now the rotary encoder is mounted. Yeah? And I want to control this servo motor. Okay, I want to control the servo motor. I will again use here a little clamp that this is, this is somehow fixed. Okay, so we said. The servo motor is moving 180 degree and therefore we need a power supply. This is the brown and the red line. So red I've put to red and brown I've put to blue uh, to fit the colors. And I'm going to use here the external power supply. All right. So plus and minus here. And here this is the PWM signal. And this I will simply use an output of our Arduino. This will go to 5. Let's say 5. Ah, come on, go in. Alright, so now also the servo should be should be connected. Okay. Am I missing something? Yes, I'm missing something. I need to put ground to ground here so that we have the same base value, ground value in both on both systems, this system and this power supply system. And of course I have to plug in uh, the power supply. Let's see if the air motor does already something. No. Okay. So this is our hardware setup. And if I'm, I'm turning here, yeah, I want to see it turning here. Okay. This would be, this would be the goal. Plug it to the computer. Ping, bidi, ping. Everything's all right. Everything's set up for programming. Okay? So let's program. So I will let the program be based on our program which we did for the encoder. Okay, base it on the encoder program using the interrupts version. Uh, well, I will save it under a new name, of course. And this is the new name is what? 27 servo. All right, uh, the pins I have use the same, this is all right, and I will also define now a pin PWM, all right, that's it, this was pin number five, right, five, yes, five, okay, and we going to include a, a library which will enable to control the, the servo motor and we will use include uh, and the library which is controlling the servo motor is called servo. That's a pretty nice name, right? For this library. Uh, we the servo again contains an object. We said an object we can use somehow like uh, almost like a variable. Uh, so I'm defining now this object servo. Uh, and I will call it 
drive. Past zero drive. All right. Now our object is defined. This drive now contains, should contain all information which is necessary to control the drive. There are some so-called methods I can call for this drive, and one of these methods I have to call in in, in setup. All right. So I have to tell at which pin our PWM signal shall be there shall be an output. Okay. And this I do with drive. Yeah. So the object's name here. Yeah? And then dot and naming the method and the method is called attach. Alright. And here I have to give the pin number and I will give the compile time constant. And that's it. Okay? The rest is the same. Here I want to start at middle position. Uh, here I have to, mm -hmm. because actually what we, how is the server really, really activated or really moved? Drive, and now there's a method called write. <laughs> write. We write to it, and we're writing to it the value. And the value should contain the number of degrees, so between 0 and 180. All right. So we just have to take care that our value is between 0 and 180. But I'm already eager to know if this thing is already working. So I'm going to upload this right now. Let's see what is happening. I will also open the serial monitor. Ah, something already moved. So if this is now 90 degree, I expect this to be 90 degree. I will move the lever, come here lever, somewhere in middle position. And now I'm going up, what is happening? Ah, it's moving. Going down. Good. Sometimes it moves a little bit. Let's see what is happening if we're going below. Oh yeah. yeah. We have to limit this because then now I can go up yeah. and it's not doing anything. And after, ah, now it's again moving. Okay, so this is working. And if we're going up, let's see what is happening there. If we're going above 180, nothing. Good. Good, good. So I want to, to uh, limit our output, our value. Yeah. How can I do this? Well, the value here, I'm increasing the value. All right. So I'm increasing the value, but I only have to increase the value if the value is, uh, is smaller than 180, right? So if value is smaller than 180, then the value shall be increased. Okay. And also only if value is bigger than zero, yeah, the value should, should be decreased if I turn in the other direction. This is now limiting, limiting the value. All right. Uh, this one, we go to a default position, I will call middle position. Okay. Upload it once again. Make it bigger. See if it is now working better. Serial monitor, where are you? Here you are. And going up. Ah, uh -huh. limited at 180. Great. And now it's immediately reacting if I'm turning in the other direction. Uh -huh. 
limiting at zero, going up, good. Good, right? So, and if we press the button, we're going to default position. You can think about this default position, right? You can think about how to select the default position. Maybe it would be nice to have this default position teachable, yeah? so that we can select the default position, right? How can this happen? How can this happen? Think about a solution. Yeah? Maybe you put in a second button. Maybe you use the button which is already built in, so that if you just click, uh, if you just click the the button, then it will move to the default position. If you have pressed it and move it, then you can select the default position. Maybe, right? This would also be a possibility to have this combined somehow you will surely run into the problem that it's, the usability will go down. Yeah? If you combine too many actions to one button, it's not self-explanatory. If you make a separate button, teach, hold this teach button and move, release the teach button, teach is N. This may be more intuitive to, to control. Okay? So, that's servo motor positioning, right? Next time, we are going to use a remote control. Okay? Next time, we, are, we will use, and we have in our starter kit an IR remote control. We have an IR receiver. And next time, I'm going to explain how we connect this. And then we are going to look, have a look into how we can read it out. This IR receiver is, by the way, compatible with most of the IR controls you have. So if you have a remote control for your television or something like that, uh, you can try if you can use it. Okay. How will then be in next video? For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.